self-initiation is also possible, but takes much longer. Self-initiation is a series of rituals undertaken by a solitary practitioner that are designed to slowly achieve the spiritual transformation without the help of a Freemasonic or other magical lodge. As stated earlier, a large gap called the abyss exists between the lower self and the higher self. The magician seeks to merge these two aspects of the self by crossing the abyss and bringing himself into unity with his higher self. In Freemasonry, and also lodges derived from the Order of the Golden Dawn, two pillars are used to symbolize this divide between the light and the darkness. Often, a curtain is placed between these two pillars, symbolizing the veil that exists between the cells of light and darkness. There is another kind of spiritual transformation available to those black magicians who walk the left-hand path, often called Satanism. These magicians, using the power of the fallen angels Lucifer and Lilith, are united with both the angelic and demonic counterparts. Human beings who have undergone this ritual of transformation become what are commonly known as vampires. Like all spiritual development, the vampiric rite is irreversible, but unlike the great work, it requires the selling of one's soul to Satan. After the vampiric rite, the individual has no chance of redemption and no chance to enter heaven. From this fact have vampires been rightly labeled the damned. Theories and interpretations regarding the quote-unquote mark of the beast abound in religious and conspiracy circles, but in the occult, this phrase has only one meaning, permanent spiritual transformation. It is said that those endowed with the mark of the beast can easily shapeshift into hideous creatures at will and take on personalities of a more chaotic sort. The fruit of Eden has just as many interpretations and in just as many circles, but in the occult, this fruit represents magical transformation. If you recall, the serpent from the Garden of Eden tells Eve that the forbidden fruit will remake her as the god. That's quite a claim. Christians have long interpreted the fruit of Eden as fruit of the more literal variety, which is just laughable. And, as stated in chapter 1, the pyramid is also a symbol of humanity's ascension into godhood. The powers of the vampire involve the conscious manipulation and liberty of the astral body. The astral bodies of humans is tightly bound to the material body. Only in the deepest of dreams, in astral travel, and in death itself will the human experience liberation of the two bodies. Vampires can fly the night sky while their material bodies remain lying in the bed. Vampires may also reach out with their senses and steal life force and even whisper into the minds of others. In popular culture, the vampire is often seen drinking blood, becoming extremely excited and perhaps animalistic during the act, killing their victim and gaining strength from the victim's blood. One of these popular conceptions is false, another is symbolic, and the rest are accurate. Vampires do become excited when they feed, and do become stronger, but they do not actually drink blood, and they do not actually kill their victim. In the movies and novels, the act of drinking physical human blood is symbolic for the taking of life force. The quote-unquote bite of the vampire is also symbolic for the rite of transformation. Vampires feed in the manner that all vampiric spirits feed. By coming into close proximity to a human, reaching out, and drawing life force out of the target's aura. The vampire extends from himself what are often described as thin, silvery threads, which act as tubes or channels in which to siphon life force from the etheric bodies of humans. So even though physical blood does indeed contain the life force, vampires usually feed on humans that have gathered in large groups. In the midst of a human crowd, the vampire can siphon life force from people as they walk by. This is a common method of feeding among vampires. The astral body of a vampire feeding from a sleeping human is another common method for feeding. Places where emotionally charged humans gather, like churches, dance clubs, and stadiums, are perfect feeding grounds for the vampire. If a single human is under continued attack, that person will begin to feel weak, drowsy, and mentally dull. The vampires call themselves the Reborn or the Manyborn. In ancient Egypt, 
Those who desired initiation and transformation underwent a death and rebirth ritual by being blindfolded and led into the center of the Great Pyramid of Giza. It was claimed that those who died in the pyramid were resurrected as gods. They became powerful wizards called the Jedi, which is where George Lucas got his Jedi. In modern times, the rite of vampiric transformation still requires clinical death. Some vampires are born and often discover at around puberty that they are a bit different from most people. This type usually claim to have many past lives as opposed to the human whose soul is fresh and will only die once. This cycle of death and rebirth is often symbolized with a serpent eating its own tail. The many names these converted ones have gone by throughout the centuries are witches, warlocks, druids, vampires, and of course, the Jedi. Although Freemasons do in fact conduct real rituals of transformation, they also reenact those rites by having initiates lowered into a pyramid while blindfolded. The good folks at Yale's Skull and Bones fraternity also reenact the ritual of death and rebirth by climbing into a coffin and being quote unquote reborn as bonesmen. After which, they are allegedly told that they are now superior to the human cattle, but considering the pedigree of its members, I'm sure they were already under that impression. These steps of initiation are symbolized by paths from one sephira to another. Here, the initiate makes his way from Malkuth to Kether. Lucifer's fall from the highest abode in the heavens is frequently represented by a lightning bolt, whereas the human's path upwards may include a snake.